Hi there, how you doing? I hope you're having a great day and if not, know that you can turn it around anytime you wish. Today we'll transform a flat portrait into a fabulous dramatic black and white. We'll learn how to add dimension, make it 3D and most importantly as the clients say, make it pop. I hope you'll enjoy the process so without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. I would love for you to follow along. The first thing we need to do is to create a black background. For that, we need to make a selection of the subject. You can use your favorite selection method like the quick selection tool and start selecting the subject like so. You can also use select subject up to you. I already have a selection so I'm just going to go to select load selection. By the way, you can download a selection made PSD in the description as well. Inside of that, I already have my subject selection. Hit OK. And there we have our subject selected. The next thing we need to do is to mask it out. So click on the mask button with the selection active. It will create a mask with that selection area as white. Now to create a black background, you already guessed what to do. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Choose black hit OK and place this layer under the subject layer. That's it. Now as you're working through this, it is very important that you name the layers. So this is our black background and this one is our subject. Double click on the text to name it. Now it is time for us to make some basic adjustments to create a nice base and then we'll create the treble later. For it, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. This creates a stamp visible layer at the top, which means this is just a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. Let's name this layer Basic Adjustments. Now before applying Camera Raw, we need to go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter so that we can come back and change the settings later. Hit OK if we need to. Now let's go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. This is where the real magic happens. A lot of people will tell you a particular order to go through, but here's my suggestion. Go in the order that you like. If you feel that it needs less highlights, start with that. If you feel that it needs more shadows, start with that. Start with your intuition. It's not math, it's art. The first thing here, of course, we need to turn it black and white. So pick that. Profile, monochrome is fine. Let us make it a bit more brighter to start with, like so. And then increase the shadows. That adds a nice contrast. But now we are lacking highlights in some areas. So let us increase that as well. So let's keep it at about maybe 18. And now let's add an overall contrast. You can also hover over the text and increase it from there as well. Now before we play with the whites and blacks, let's apply certain effects and then we'll circle back to it. Scroll down, open up effects and of course we want a lot of texture. See, that increases the grittiness of the portrait. So we're going to keep it low. Let's start low. Later we're going to go higher. Keep in mind there are several adjustments to be made. Try to be as plain and basic as possible. Of course, we need clarity, but that's just making it too bright. So let's keep it low and then dehaze is going to make the magic. So let's increase it. See that? This is fantastic. Now let's circle back to whites and blacks. Let's increase the whites to add more highlight here. Not too much. Something like 15 or 16 would work. Now these areas are getting too dark. So let's also slightly increase the blacks like this. Now it is time for us to move into a little more advanced adjustments where we will add that three dimension and we can do it right here with masks. Let's go to the masking section inside of camera and we are going to choose a radial gradient. You already know where we are going with this. Let's drag a gradient like so. We want to make sure that the feather is all the way up like Fat Joe and then all you got to do is to increase the exposure inside the light settings. Just increase it. See what it does. Something like so. Fantastic. But it's increasing the highlights way too much. So let's decrease it from here. This is fine. Also, it's brightening the nose way too much. So let's subtract that area. Right here, there is a subtract button. Click on it and we will choose a regular brush. Just paint the area you wish to subtract like the nose and you should be done. You can adjust anything anytime. So let's get back to the radial gradient. And I'm going to make it smaller, like so. And move it up here. This adds a nice 3D depth. But to make it stand out even more, let us not just add light effects, but also add some effects. Let's increase the texture to make it stand out even more. And maybe we'll increase the dehaze, like so. 
Not so much. Something like this is fine. Now we have enhanced the mid part, but to make it completely 3D, we need to add some darkness around the corners, right? So let us create one more mask by clicking on create a new mask and we will choose radial gradient again. And let's drag in another gradient like so. Again, you want to make sure the feather is all the way up like, you know the answer. But this time it's going to be something different. It's affecting the middle areas. We want to invert the mask. How do we do that? Simple. Click on this button to invert the mask. And then we will simply decrease the exposure. Inside of the light settings, let's take it down like so. Oh my gosh, already it's looking fantastic. Just by doing this, it's giving it such a nice look. You can even make it slightly larger like so. All right, this is nice. And choose to make it narrower or wider. This is pretty great. So here's the before and here is the after. And this is just the beginning. Hit OK once you're satisfied. The next thing we can do to make it look more 3D is to add some shiny highlights to the portraits. And the easiest way to do that is Blendif. And that is why we have still kept the portrait a bit flat. First, click on the adjustment layer icon and then create a curves adjustment layer. You already know this is our favorite. Create a point in the middle and take it up like so. Now it's best to be done in separate areas one by one because every area has a different brightness level. Now double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layers that lie under it by moving the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Let's start with this cheek. This is fine. Now right here it's very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart like so. Just focus on this area, that's it. So this seems to be about right. I'm going to stop right about there. Hit OK. Now we will only paint in that area. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. Just simply paint on that area. You want to make sure flow and opacity are at 100. And that's it. You can also try painting on similar areas and see how they react or do it separately. Let's create one more curves adjustment layer and we will repeat this process. We will take it up like so. This time, let's do it for this cheek. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider from left to right. Stop right here, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart like so. All right, it's done for that particular area. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it with white as the foreground color. Simply paint on that area. I accidentally painted a bit over the nose, so let's erase that by painting with black. Now you can always come back to the settings even if you have closed it by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer. And let's adjust it accordingly. We need to match it with this side. So about this much is fine. Similarly, we are going to repeat the process for the forehead, nose, lips and maybe chin. So there you go, we have finished applying it to different areas. As you can see, the first one was for this cheek, the second one for the right cheek, and then we have other areas like the forehead, the nose, parts of the lips and the upper lip, and then we have the chin. This may not look like much, but together they add up. So here's before and here is after. Now to add even more depth, let's darken the sides even more. For it, create another curves adjustment layer and this time we are just going to take it down like so. Something like this would be enough. Already it's looking fantastic. Of course we don't want it in the middle. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Then we are going to take the brush with white as the foreground color slowly and gradually will paint around the corners with a soft brush. Similarly on the other side, see how much drama it adds before, after. Again as you're doing this, do not forget to name the layers. All of these layers, select the first curves, hold the shift key, select the last one here, Control or command G to group them. These ones were for the highlights and this is for the edge shadows. Now I feel like we can benefit a little more with some added grunge. Keep in mind, there is no fixed steps when you're creating art. You go with your intuition. In this case, we are going to create another stamp visible layer or a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. And how do we do that? By pressing Control. Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. Now let's go to filter, 
convert for smart filters do not forget we want to be able to come back and change stuff later if we needed to go to filter and then camera raw filter let's directly go to effects and increase the texture amazing let's not overdo this this is fine increasing the clarity just brightens it so let's not apply that and dehaze is what makes the most difference so not too much something like that would work for us now i know it is too much grunge but don't worry this is going to be controlled later let's go up maybe let's add a bit more contrast and decrease the highlight so that we are not losing details this is fine hit okay this adds a slight edge to the photo let us name this layer grunge if you want to add some mystery to the eyes just a slight bit create another curves adjustment layer take it up a little bit like so select the mask press control or command i take the brush with white as the foreground color just dab right here on the eyeball a little bit towards the bottom similarly dab here as well now you can take away the excess press x to toggle between the foreground and the background colors and then take away the extra areas if you wanted to keep it there that is fine too there you go similarly here this adds some nice story to the eyes don't forget to name this layer now as i told you the grunge feels too much there needs to be a slight fade let us apply that again with our favorite curves adjustment layer create another curves like so and use the hand instead select the hand activate it maybe we want to brighten these highlight areas a little bit like so and darken these shadow areas or you can also directly make a point here and darken them and then you can take the leftmost point and take it up slightly to add that fade now i'm going to add that darkness here as well there you have it slight fade with an added contrast let's name this layer fade now what if we add some edge lighting some kind of rim light that would be fun create another curves adjustment layer and this time take the slider on the right to the left like so all right don't worry about the middle areas this is only going to be towards the edge all right select the mask press control or command i to invert it take the brush with white as the foreground color make the brush slightly bigger and then just paint don't worry about the background we're going to take care of that later just paint towards the edge you can also erase the extras similarly on the other side and control it from here Now of course we need to remove it from the background areas and also certain dark areas. Now since the background is very dark, one easy way to do that is blend if. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. See? Instantly goes away. Hold the alt key or the option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart like so. See that? This is nice. I'm going to also take it away a little bit from the left and this just works nicely. hit okay once you're satisfied and there you have it some nice highlights before after see that now if you feel that there are certain excess areas select the mask take the brush black as the foreground color and you can certainly take it away from the rest of the areas there you go let's name this layer edge light you can just literally play with lights right now let's say the light is falling from the top you need some more shadows right here around the cheek you can create one more curves adjustment layer take it down like so select the mask press control or command i to invert it take the brush white as the foreground color just dab here dab there and maybe a little bit here to add a little more shadow similarly you can introduce some lights around the corners of the cheek let's do one more curves adjustment layer and take the right slider to the left like so okay Now select the mask press control or command i to invert it and here we are just going to paint with white wherever we want it similarly here as well and of course remove the extras press x to toggle between the foreground and the background color now you can control the amount like so see that edge lighting it's looking so good now of course you can control it with blend if by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer do the same process hold the alt key or the option key click on the slider break it apart and do something like so to add that additional grunge hit okay this is turning into something magnificent do you think we should stop here i think we should because there is no end to it maybe 
After a few more effects, let us group all of these layers, select the first curves, hold the shift key, select the last one with light added, control or command G and let's name this group lights. And towards the end, let's add an overall contrast, click on the adjustment layer icon, choose curves again and this time hold the alt key or the option key and take this slider to the left and stop at just the point where you begin to lose details in the main portrait. So right at this point, we begin to lose details so we can stop at 225 or maybe a little before that and this just works perfectly. Now if you want to add a halo effect that is also possible so create another. You already are fed up with this aren't you? Take the left point up like so, select the mask, press ctrl or command i, take the brush with white as the foreground color just paint. You can also try different flow values so I'm gonna go 20% this is just insane looking. Now we need to remove it from the portrait from the middle. For it, let's scroll down. We already have a mask. Hold the controller command, click on the mask to make a selection. Now let's get back to this one. You can increase the flow back to 100 and just erase it from the middle. Keep it towards the edge by the way. Paint with black as the foreground color. Press controller command D to deselect and there you have it. So that's how to absolutely, absolutely positively transform a portrait. And here is the before. And here is the overall after. As you can see, I've also erased the edges around the corners for a more dramatic effect. Now, to be honest with you, it would be hard to make a quick recap here because there are no steps involved. You move according to your intuition. Just a few things to keep in mind. Keep things as non-destructive as possible so you can always get back and change stuff later. Name the layers because you're going to be adding a lot of them and you need to know which one does what. And finally and most importantly, move according to what big changes you need to make first and then slowly and gradually towards the smaller changes. Go where the road takes you and enjoy the process. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. If you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond, cover all of these stuff topics in depth, learn the concepts of Photoshop, do check out our pro courses at piximperfect.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.